Hello and welcome back to the final video in our series. This video introduces two parts of Archivmatica that allow you to further configure your instance. These are the preservation planning and administration tabs. So let's start in the preservation planning tab. Preservation planning is the de facto user interface for the format policy registry. It allows users to add or edit format policies for normalization, characterization, validation, and other tools and workflows that act upon content preserved through Archivmatica. Using the Preservation Planning tab effectively starts with some work outside of Archivmatica, that is, creating your local policies and practices for how to handle different formats, particularly around normalization. Once you have these policies in place, you can use the Preservation Planning tab to carry them out. I'll give a quick overview of some of the most important and commonly accessed aspects of this tab in this video, but the documentation is thorough and is, as always, the best resource for understanding how to use preservation planning for your specific circumstances. So let's go back to the preservation planning tab. Starting at the top, you can view all the formats currently recognized by Archimatica. So right now I've selected formats here in the upper left. These formats are drawn from Pronom. You can also add local records for extremely uncommon or one-off formats manually by selecting Create New Format right here. And then you can fill in some details about the format that you want to add. In addition to viewing information about different formats here, you can optionally designate individual formats as preservation or access formats. So if we take a look at one example, so let's try WAV files. We'll search for that here in the upper right, and we'll choose this one on the bottom. If you want to be extra certain that you're picking the right format or the one that you mean to be picking, you can always look up the FMT slash and then the number in Pronom just to be double sure. But I'm pretty sure this is the WAVE format that I'm interested in. And you can see here uh, that there's actually two different uh, entries for WAVEs. And I have designated both of these as preservation formats. So that means that Archivmatica will recognize any files that I submit in WAVE format as already being in a preservation format. And it won't renormalize WAVE files for preservation. It will instead retain the original object as the preservation file. So next on the left, you can see here where it says identification, characterization, extraction, and so on. These are a series of purposes. And you might notice that these names are the same as some of Archivmatica's microservices, like characterization, validation, and normalization, which appear a little further down here. All right, so before we go further into the format policy registry, let's zoom out and understand a little more about part of what's happening in this part of Archivmatica. So you may have noticed with each of those purposes on the left, beneath them is a link to rules and commands. So let's talk about what those are. As we've discussed, Archivmatica acts as a wrapper for many open source tools that are used to carry out preservation actions. So those tools are called by commands and then they, those tools act on files. Format policy commands are scripts or command line statements that control how a tool runs. A command is created for a particular purpose, like file identification. And so, for example, during transfer, you might tell Archivmatica to identify the format of your files. Format policy rules, in turn, associate commands with files in particular formats. So, for example, for normalization, you might have a rule that tells Archivmatica to run a particular command to normalize if a file is in the format TIFF. So it's a little too much detail for an orientation video like this to explain the full range of options for configuring commands and rules, but let's take a quick look at one example. So if we go down to normalization, select rules, and we'll give that just a moment to load. And then I'm going to search for PNG. 
So here I can see the purpose on the left. So there's access, preservation, and thumbnail. And so for each of these, we can see that I've set a rule to associate this command in the command column with the format PNG. So for example, for access, I've set a rule that associates the command transcoding to JPEG with convert with the format PNG. From here, you can view, edit, enable, or disable rules. Um, so you can select here in order to change or replace these rules. Um, so let's take a look at one rule just so you see what it looks like. So here you can see the purpose of the rule, the format that it applies to, the command that will run, and then the actions available to you, which in this case are either replace or disable. Now let's move to looking a little bit closer at the administration tab. The administration tab allows administrative users to set processing configurations, transfer and storage locations, dip upload configurations, and to add and remove new users, along with other actions that relate to how your site functions as a whole. So let's look at a couple of these points in more detail. Setting processing configurations is another way of saying pre-making all the decisions I made manually when I was processing my content into an AIP and or a DIP. So you can pre-make all the decisions through the administration tab and then run um, your preservation process within an automated configuration. And you can also set up multiple configurations to accommodate different workflows. So the way that you do that here is in processing configuration. I've got a few set up and I could add a new one here by clicking on add at the bottom, but let's take a look at one of the ones that I already configured. So if we go in here, we'll see all of the prompts where I made decisions manually while I was processing my content into an AIP. Uh, so for example, scan for viruses, and I can just tell Archivatica from the outset, yes or no. Um, if you select none, that means you haven't pre-made a decision, so Archimatica will still prompt you to make a decision manually. Um, so yeah, you can see here, for example, approve normalization. I left that as none, so in this hypothetical configuration that I've created, that means that I have decided that I want to approve the normalization manually every time I run with this configuration. So you can also view your storage locations and the amount of storage that you have remaining if you click on storage locations here on the left. So we'll see that I have both ape storage and dip storage configured. Uh, the descriptions here, the location is on the right under path. And then we can see in this used slash available column how much storage I've used and how much I have remaining. I'm lucky I have a demo instance. So in this case, the remaining storage is unlimited. And then, like I mentioned, you can also add or remove users from the user interface. So if you go here on the left to users, we can see I've got one user configured. That's me. Um, I can add a new user here or delete this existing user here or make any changes necessary by clicking on edit. So that wraps up our quick orientation tour of the format policy registry and the administration tab. So what you learned about in this video, what we talked about was the preservation planning tab and the format policy registry, just an introduction to how those function, uh, as well as an introduction to the administration tab, which included setting a processing configuration. This is also the end of our whole video series. So over the course of these five videos, we discussed the following. In the introduction video, we talked about what it means that Archivmatica is web-based, standards-based, and open source, as well as broadly speaking, how Archivmatica performs preservation actions. In the transfer tab, video, we talked about how to start a transfer in Archivmatica and make decisions related to microservices. In the ingest tab video, we talked about how to normalize your content and generate an AIP. 
In the archival storage tab video, we talked about what an Archivmatica AIP looks like, what's in there, and same thing for a METS file. What does it look like and what information is contained in there? And then in the final video, which is this one that you're watching right now, we talked about the preservation planning and administration tabs, including how to manage format policies in the preservation planning tab and how to set automatic configurations and carry out other administrative actions in the administration tab. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this series and learned a little bit about Archivmatica. Um, we're always available for questions or feedback, and you can find more information about how to contact us on our website. So again, thank you so much for watching.